Okay, so this morning in the first hour we'll uh, try to make a couple of exercises um, about the first one was uh, is about uh, a race, a race of numbers, just to get familiar with the, the methods that we saw together uh, on, in, on the previous lecture. And, and the second one is about lists, uh, sorry, strings, uh, manipulating strings. Uh, we still need to see uh, what kind of methods we have, uh, but we should have to just uh, uh, just before the exercise, okay? And then in the second hour, we'll move to objects and functions and so on. So uh, what we are trying to do here <coughs> is to uh, play with uh, some small exercises. Uh, uh, the idea is that along the course, uh, we will build something uh, in the floor, uh, along the different weeks, uh, something that looks like a question and answer website, you know, uh, Stack Overflow or something like that, okay? So that uh, we, the different type of exercises that are there just for familiarizing for the language, uh, we try to put them into that context. Hmm? So the first uh, exercise uh, is about uh, um, improving a set of scores. So imagine you have a, an array of numbers, of integral numbers, that may be positive or negative. Imagine the scoring of your answers on Stack Overflow. You can also get a negative score if, if you are answering something out of context. Um, and uh, we want to implement a procedure that will improve your scores. So imagine you have uh, maybe 20 different replies in your, uh, in, your, in your profile. So you reply to many different uh, uh, questions. Uh, and for each of these questions, you've got a, a, a score given by the other users of the system that will upvote up or downvote uh, your reply. And uh, uh, we want to create an improved version of the score. So something where we just delete the negative scores uh, and we remove uh, the two lowest ranking scores. Uh, and uh, at the end, to, to, to uh, have the same number of, of uh, overall scores as before, we add at the end of the, of the list uh, as many scores as we deleted, so as many scores as the negative numbers were, plus two, that was the two, min two minor numbers that we also deleted, and we add them at the end uh, equal to the average, so they, they will not change the average. So at the end, we'll have a, a, an, an array of score which is better than the initial one, okay? It's usually, it's, it's totally useless, uh, just for, for playing with array, right? So, um, let's start with the scores, better scores. Uh, so JS, okay? Um, be a bit larger. Okay, so we always start uh, with a use strict statement in the beginning. I don't know where to, to be, just not be in, in the way of the projector. But anyway, I will keep moving right and left. Um, so uh, the text, uh, we don't have any input output capability yet. So let's assume we you know, just uh, uh, bury the, the, the the scores uh, into an array that we define con as a constant in, in our code. I don't know, three, four, two, nine, minus two, seven, minus three, and uh, 10, whatever. Hmm? So this will be our uh, current store scores that we want to improve some way. Um, just check. if everything is working. Scores, semicolon. And uh, for uh, running okay, the program, we may either go to the terminal, so we already have one, and go to the, as some of you mentioned before, into the correct directory and just run node with the uh, back by name, and it will print and format in some way the content of my array. Okay, of course, it's not a, uh, a, a very a convenient way of, uh, of running programs. We also have in, um, in, uh, in Visual Studio Code a run menu, run and debug menu on the left, the, that one with the arrow and the bug. 
there are many ways of running programs. Uh, usually, um, Visual Studio Code tries to push you into creating a launch.js file with all the file instruction, but we don't need that. Uh, there's just a run and debug button that will run the current file, the currently open file. Uh, it will ask you how to run it, and of course, we, we choose uh, Node.js. And it will run uh, and execute the program. And it will, the output will be here on this uh, debug console. Okay? Uh, it's called run and debug because it's, uh, by default, it will activate the debugger. Right now, it didn't stop because we don't have any exception, any errors, and we didn't, didn't set any breakpoint. But if you want, we can set a breakpoint here just by clicking on the line number. And if we run it again, Okay, the execution will stop at the breakpoint, of course. And on the left, uh, we have some uh, debugging windows. One with uh, variables. Uh, for example, we have the list of variables, uh, including the scores that we decide or we defined. So we see that this variable is an array of eight elements. Uh, and if we want, we can go and inspect each of them. Uh, other variables are predefined ones in the context. Uh, we have the current code location, and uh, we have uh, the controls there for running the program. So step over, step into, uh, step out, uh, restart, uh, run until the end, and stop. So the usual commands for, for the bug. Okay? So it's not very familiar, but uh, it can be done. Uh, this is one possibility. So uh, running, uh, setting up a point and, and uh, running uh, from, from the menu there. I'm I will going to stop it here. Uh, another possibility is to call it the JavaScript debug terminal. Okay, what does it do? It will open a terminal window here that looks like any other terminal, but you see on the right is called the JavaScript debug terminal. It's not just a, a shell. Uh, what it does is that it monitors uh, what you are doing, and if you are running something with Node, it will automatically attach the debugger to it. Okay, so uh, I, I want to run this, uh, this code, so I run it with node uh, better scores, ah, sorry, I need to move to the directory, always, node better scores. So I'm running it in, a, in the shell, but this shell has been you know, empowered with the debugger, so as soon as you run something with node, the debugger is attached, and so we can debug the same code uh, when we are running it from the command line. So sometimes we want to run it from the command line for passing arguments for uh, because the file is in a different path or, or whatever. And uh, for doing that, we just need to open the uh, debug terminal instead of a regular terminal. Hmm? Okay, so this is the basics uh, for, for working. Of course, there is no stop uh, button here because uh, uh, the, the, the process is being started here from the terminal. You need to stop it from the terminal. You can only detach the debugger if you want, okay, and uh, let the program run until the end or until it crashes. Okay, that's the, <coughs> the basics. Um, okay, this is a, a very ugly button. I, I, I don't know any shortcut for running so without clicking on the button, but. Uh. Okay, so let's go to our algorithms or whatever uh, we want to call them. So uh, the idea is uh, that we need to first uh, uh, create a copy of the array. So we don't need to modify that array. We don't want to modify that array. But we create a new one with the, where the scores are so manipulated in this way. Uh, by the way, I declared these. Uh, variable as constant, okay? Which is normal. You know, normally, by default, we try to get the habit of declaring everything constant unless we really know that we want to modify it. Uh, just for, for the sake of exercise, do you think that uh, uh, scores uh, three equal to seven would be allowed with, on a const uh, array or not? Yes, 
uh, why? Because const is the variable. The variable is constant. Its contents are objects, values, that are not constant. So a const variable prevents you from modifying the variable. It doesn't prevent you from modifying the value attached to that variable. So this would run normally. 0, 1, 2, 3. Instead of the 9, we see that a 7. Let's remove the breakpoint. point. One. Close. What did they run? Run. Okay, here. You see, we have a seven in the small position. Hmm? Uh, the same if we want to add something, scores dot push thirteen. It will run at the end because we are modifying the contents of the array, the value pointed by the variable. Const only constraints or limits what you can do with the variable. Uh, it doesn't do anything with the value. In fact, what we couldn't we could not we, we uh, so what we couldn't do is to redirect the variable scores to a new one. that would be blocked by uh, assignment to constant variable error. Right. So just always keep in mind that variables and values live on two, on two separate planets, and the constant statement refers to the variables, not to the content. We can use any method for updating the content of a structured variable without you know, impacting the constantness of the variable itself. What we cannot do is to use the same variable to point to something else. Hmm? Um, so let's just keep that in mind. Okay, let's comment that and go forward. So, but anyway, we want to create a, a copy of the scores and then remove uh, negative numbers and then remove uh, the two lowest scores, right? Uh, well, we can just create a copy. And the easiest syntax for creating a copy of the of the uh, variable of this one with array.from or with the spread operator. So I'm creating a new you know, open square brackets is new array. I'm creating something new. And the contents of this is the list of elements uh, that previously were in the variable scores. So in this way, we are creating a new array with the same values, with a copy of the same values. And the modification of the new array that don't uh, um, affect uh, the previous one. I need to remove something no, from this better and to add something. But we saw that we can do that even if uh, the variable is constant. Okay, we just saw that. So I don't have any problem in declaring that as constant. Um, now, removing the two negative numbers, uh, the, oh, the, the negative numbers that are in the, in the array is something that uh, we will learn to do with a filter uh, method called back. Uh, but we don't know function like callbacks yet. So we can try, we will do it uh, the old way, you know, the C way. Uh, the first idea you could have is, uh, okay, let's make a loop over the, the array for let i equal to zero, i my, uh, less than uh, better dot length, i plus plus, uh, if better position i is negative, then uh, remove that element. 
we saw yesterday the method uh, splice that was a sort of cut and paste uh, so we could do something like uh, better dot splice so splice has two at least two parameters the first is uh, where to um, delete the number and the count is how many numbers we want to be to delete so we want to delete one position okay so it will be i one I modifying the content of the array pointed by the better variable. I'm not modifying the variable. So, uh, if I'm not wrong, this is wrong. Run. Uh, so, wait, the terminal window. Okay, this looks like it works. Uh, by the way, try to imagine what is happening. Better dot length is a number that will decrease across the iteration. Okay, so at the end, the length of the array is decreased by one every time we call splice. But the for loop is reevaluating this expression every time. This is why we, don't, we are not running into an index out of bounds uh, error exception. Because uh, otherwise, we, this loop, uh, initially we had, I don't know, many eight elements. And finally, we have only six. Uh, but uh, if we wrote here eight, uh, or we maybe score dot length, uh, would be an error, of course. OK? If I added a, a constant, score dot length, uh, which is the initial length, uh, so I want to, for example, read all the scores. Uh, we'll get an error because at uh, some point i will be greater than the length uh, of, the, uh, of the array hmm? because the array is shrunk. It's something that always gives me some sort of dizziness to modify an array while iterating it. And in fact, it's wrong because if I had, by chance, two consecutive negative numbers, this code is bugged because the minus seven is not deleted. Can you see why? Uh, because I'm deleting something in position I, everything on the right is shifted left by one position, and then I'm in incrementing I, and so I'm skipping the check on the next element, on the, uh, the element immediately following the negative one. So it's always true that modifying a data structure while you are iterating it is a bad idea. Right? Because the indexes get mixed, messed up every time you add or, or delete something. The only safe way to do that would be to start the loop from the from the end and go back towards the beginning. So when you're deleting something, you are shifting, you're moving elements that you already have processed. But again, it's uncomfortable. Hmm? So what would be, so you get the problem. Hmm? What would be a, a better solution? Okay, let's go the other way around. Instead of uh, copying everything and uh, uh, removing something, let's just uh, start from scratch and add what we need. We reverse the, law, the, the idea. So instead of doing this, I would prefer starting from an empty array and then analyze all the values and only those values that match my criteria will be added. So for the values of scores. So we iterate over the previous scores and if those are 
weighted on zero, then we can add them. Better put value. And this should provide yeah, the correct result. Don't get angry about performance yet. Okay. It seems that creating an ad creating a new data structure instead of modifying a current one would be slower or whatever, but the real problem is not there no, in web applications. The main, main problem is functionality. So what we will learn is to get to this, uh, this result uh, with a, just a one line of code uh, with a filter fallback uh, when, we, when we do functional programming. But the idea would be, uh, in most of the cases, creating something from scratch is more error-proof than trying to modify something that you have. Everything is constant. Every time we need to compute something, we create a new variable and we, co we copy the values there. Not every time, but uh, let's not be afraid of doing that. Uh, let's not try to save uh, memory or save uh, execution cycles until we need it. But first of all, correctness. Hmm? Okay, so we have at this point, uh, what? Eliminating all the negative scores. Okay, we also need to count how many of them, how many were there. So how many negative scores did we have? Uh, oh, well, we can just make the difference between eight and five. Hmm? How many we deleted? So the, the number of elements that weren't, weren't added, let's call them negative const. Number of negatives is uh, course dot length minus better dot length. Right. Then the next step, the exercise you asked for is. Uh, to eliminate the two lowest ranking scores. That means uh, compute the minimum and delete it. And after that, recompute the minimum of what is left uh, and delete it also. That's one way of doing that. Uh, the other way is uh, make a loop, try to find the location of the two uh, smallest items that will be more efficient because first we find the location then we delete them uh, but uh, I wouldn't try to write that code in the morning okay because you need to keep track of the first and the second uh, the last and the second last value and whether they are equal to each other whether there are more than two <sighs> no thanks um, let's just uh, spend a few CPU cycles and make it correct in the first run right uh, so find a minimum delete it find a minimum delete it The other alternative would be sort the array and remove the first two elements. Uh, the problem is we don't know how to sort an array of numbers yet because uh, we saw yesterday, uh, last time that it will sort as a strings. So we need to learn how to explain to sort that we want a different uh, um, comparison criteria. And then we are losing the order of the elements if you sort and delete the first one. So if the order is significant, the text doesn't say anything, but uh, Let's not uh, destroy the order of the elements. Uh, uh, in addition, finding a minimum is faster than sorting the array. Okay, so finding a minimum is easy because uh, uh, let const min val. So you know, in JavaScript, they tend to use uh, camel case. Min val equal to we have a must.min function. Uh, we have the slide with all the mathematics function. Min is there, the minimum is there. It takes an array of values and returns a number. Uh, this must be numeric expression to be evaluated. Returns a smaller of a set of some supplied numeric expression. So uh, the, these expressions are in letter. 
our variable. Okay. So where is the, so I found the minimum among the positive numbers, of course, because the negative is already gone. And I need to find uh, the position of this minimum and delete it. So finding the position is uh, as an index of operation, maybe. So it const minimum position equal to better index of. So index of uh, finds, it's a method of the array that finds a value, an element, and returns uh, the index of the first occurrence of that value. If there is more than one, we are finding only the first one, but we don't care. And any of them would be, hmm? they are equally minimum. So the index of the minimum values. And finally, we know what is the location of the elements to remove. We just uh, delete it with a splice statement. Uh, minimum position, one element. Not very efficient. We are iterating the array three times. First for finding minimum, second for finding its position that we could already know if we computed the minimum ourselves, keeping track on the value and the position. And then a second pass for uh, rearranging the array after the deletion. I can live with that. And now the what? The tank is gone. No, I don't like it. So let's try to debug that. So better contain these values, right? So if I execute the minimum, it will give me minimum value. That is not a number. Good, why? Uh, Or maybe okay, maybe and let me try this. Okay. Sorry, I misread the definition of the minimum function. Minimum is a function that expects a, a list of numbers as parameters, as arguments mean three comma two comma seven comma five we don't have a list number we have a container of numbers so we need to con convert no, the elements of the array into many parameters for that function and that's what we can use the straight operator for my mistake i forgot that the Okay, and so the next step would be to compute the position of this minimum. That is uh, position of the minimum, minimum position two, means that uh, better is uh, zero, one, two, the, the number two is in position two. And so we can splice it uh, and we see that uh, the two is gone. Hmm? Okay. Sorry for the bug, but it's normal. And uh, the second, uh, and then we just need to repeat this uh, a second time. So uh, we can repeat it. Of course, uh, it's an error because we, are, we cannot redeclare really with the const the same variable. 
so we either change the name of the variable or make it a let a modifier of the variable and uh, we move the declaration here because we are not declaring a new variable but uh, we're using an existing one okay, so this is going well we got rid of the two and of the three okay now the last step is to add we have we had eight, eight elements and now we have only three we need to add five elements whose value is equal to the rounded average of the of the current scores so we make an average of four nine and ten and whatever it is maybe seven maybe uh, we add uh, five copies of the number average okay an average is just the sum divided by the length uh, unfortunately there is no sum function in the standard library probably they were drunk they put minimum max but they didn't put sum into that we will learn how to do the sum so we done one instruction using the reduce functional method but for now we don't know it so we do it the old way let sum equal to zero for const value in of 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 not in of uh, better sum is increased by the value and so the average is uh, uh, round math.round of uh, the sum divided by the length of better better dot length and then we just need to push five times this value at the end of the array uh, so for c equal to zero c minus so how many times uh, number of negatives plus two because we deleted all the negatives and twice the minimum c plus plus uh, int sorry left um, better but push average which is wrong Oh, yes, thank you. Plus equal, not equal plus. Otherwise, we will get the last value only because it will be equal plus value. Thank you. Yeah. I do right. Okay, so nothing difficult, just a bit of randomness because sometimes we use the method, sometimes we use functions, sometimes we use the array, sometimes we need to spread it. But uh, what we learn is uh, especially to to replace this this uh, cycles here to do primitive operation with the functional programming uh, methods. So that we try as much as possible to work at the data structure level and not at the index level. So try to avoid uh, writing four cycles for every array operation. Let's let the compiler do that and let's not them do that by hand. Okay. Okay.
Okay. So the yeah. So I, I can, yeah, appear more than once, yeah. No, it is because I'm what I'm doing here is not rem, uh, if the minimum is two, I'm not removing all the tools in the array, I'm only removing one of the tools, okay. Like when we delete one element at the position where the first of, uh, occurrence of the minimum is, uh, is appearing. So I'm, otherwise I would use instead of slice a remove method that will remove all the values uh, that happen to be equal to the minimum, okay? But not, I'm removing two, exactly two elements, one here and one there. And if there are more than, um, if you have an array where we have two, 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 you only delete two, two, sorry, <laughs> and leave the rest. Okay. The rest of the exercise is asking us to do some uh, game with strings. So how do we deal with strings uh, in JavaScript? Let me see if we have something in the slides by chance. And it seems that we do. At the end, uh, so uh, strings are a very simple data structure. Uh, strings are an immutable sequence of characters. Okay, in JavaScript there is no separate character type. There is no char. Everything is a string. So it can be a string of one character or a string of more characters. Strings are immutable, it means that uh, there, are, there are no methods to modify the value of a string. So once a string, is, uh, a string object is defined, uh, its contents cannot be modified. You cannot add one character, you cannot delete, you cannot modify any of it. If you want, of course, you can always create new ones uh, that are a modified version of the current one. Okay. Um, so there are a few, uh, few Far lesser methods for creating strings, or to uh, then, or modifying or working with strings than we have with arrays because of these properties. We have, uh, apart from that, it looks like an array, it's an array of characters, of elements of one character. Okay, uh, there's a length property, uh, and uh, you can create string with single quotes, with double quotes, also with back quotes. So we'll see that uh, in a moment. We can so. The idea is that since the strings are immutable, every operation on a string returns a new string. So when, you, when I index an element, what I'm doing is to create a new string of one element only that contains the fourth element in the original string. Uh, when I concatenate two strings, of course, uh, I will create a new string, which is uh, the joint uh, sequence uh, of the first string one and string two. S1 and S2 are, ne are not modified, S is not modified, and so on. Length, it works as in the arrays. And these are the methods that we have. Uh, the first one is char at, char code at, code point at, are just variants of this indexing. Char at the three is the same as string square brackets three, as we had before. Uh, the difference is that uh, they get picky about uh, Unicode characters because you know that in Unicode a single character may occupy more code points, uh, more positions in the array. Don't get started about that. Um, index of searching the position of a given character or substring, substring search instead. Starts with and with are special cases of index of uh, that only search at the beginning or at the end. We have uh, a split that takes a string and creates an array by splitting the string in the position of the um, separator character. Split is the opposite of join. Join works on arrays and return strings by joining them. 
and the split work on, works on strings and returns arrays. Um, there's a slice that returns a substring, a new substring. Of course, there's no splice because you cannot modify it. Uh, substring is also a close friend of, of slice. Um, they do the same thing, but there are different three different names for doing the same operation for historical reasons always. There's a whole chapter about regular expressions that I try to avoid, at lowercase and uppercase, uh, and so on. And this, yeah, trim is also interesting because you will delete the white space at the beginning and the end of the string. So when you do some input, uh, it's always good to trim the white space uh, on the borders of the string itself. That's it. We have uh, internally strings are represented in Unicode as 16 bits. So uh, all one byte or two byte uh, Unicode sequences are represented in the same way. But some characters that require more than two bytes uh, are represented as two code points. Uh, the first one is just a partial code with a special ETF 16 uh, is, the, is the internal representation. Okay. Um, so some, most of them in, uh, just require one position, but some characters, I know, the emoji or something like uh, in, in the end uh, of the Unicode uh, uh, list uh, requires two bytes. So uh, if, again, it's another reason to avoid, whenever possible, to work by indexes. Because if you work in index position, you, are, you it may happen that the index, the position that you're indexing is not a single is not a whole character by itself, but it would need also the, the next one. So we try always to use functions that work at the string level that know how to take care of this. Um, otherwise, uh, if our string contains strange characters, uh, it will not work. Because we are splitting a character into uh, incomplete code. Okay, there's a third way of uh, declaring a string with the back quotes. Okay, that uh, are usually impossible to find on Italian keyboards, but uh, that's your problem. Um, I have a US keyboard always. And uh, what what is what they do is that they have two superpowers. One, the first superpower of uh, they they are called the template literals. Okay, okay. Uh, the first superpower is that they contain new lines. They can contain new lines. So if you want to create a string uh, that spans multiple lines, maybe a message or whatever, instead of creating the different pieces, uh, what you say, the backslash n, or concatenating them, you just, just uh, open the next bit and go uh, and close it uh, maybe three lines later. But uh, the more interesting superpower is that they can interpolate uh, values. So inside a template literal, if you have a syntax with dollar and, and um, and uh, braces, you can just uh, uh, insert the value of an expression inside the string. So instead of doing ugly string concatenation for printing something, always use this one. Okay, it's easier to read and less error prone. Also, uh, you are you can control more what it get what it gets printed, but because if you try to do string concatenation with numbers. You know that all the automatic conversions kick in with the plus operators. Uh, while here, no, you are you are more controlled exactly of what is the value that you want to insert and to convert. Of course, it will any expression here will be computed and then converted to string. Okay. Uh, the variables that you can use here are, of course, those defined in the context uh, uh, where this instruction is executed. So they are only local variables. Okay. Uh, there was a, just a three slides for the basic uh, information about the strings so that we can try to read and solve the second exercise. The second exercise is telling us to define the names of some users as a comma separated list. So, this is an example of a uh, uh, a list of names that could be users of the platform. They are the features of the course. Um, and this will be our input. Okay. What will you 
what we want to do is to parse the string and create an array con oops, containing one name per array position. So we want to split the list of names, which is now a single string, into uh, an array of names. And uh, uh, beware of the extra spaces. So in the array, we, we, we want to get rid of the spaces so that uh, initially were, but we'll see what happens. Huh? And then we want to create acronyms from the names. So taking just the initial letter of, of each name. So we will have uh, one array of names and an array of acronyms. Creating the acronyms means uh, I try to find, uh, isolate the words inside the name and then extracting the first letter of each word and putting them together. Finally, bring the list of acronyms with their poor uh, names beside them. Okay, so that's nothing. Again, we can try another, create another file here, uh, acronyms. .js, use script. Okay, let's define the names of these people as a string. I copy it from here. And uh, what uh, we want to do, what we need to do, is to convert this uh, string into an array. We can use the split method of the, of the string. So we can have a name array, maybe. It's not a good name, but does the job, names dot split and split can split a string into some string using the specified separator and return them as an array hmm? so the argument of the string is a separator string a string that identifies a character or character to use in separating the string so in this case the separator will be the comma right comma character okay so let's see what it does Try to run this. Not. Okay, this is what we get. We get an array of strings uh, with the names that are duly separated by, but if you look closely, there's a space uh, before each uh, of the uh, elements except the first one. And this was the space that was after the comma. Okay, so the comma will split, uh, and uh, on the right of the comma, we have a space, uh, and then the next, uh, uh, the beginning of the next name. So, for sure, we need to get rid of that space. And for doing that, uh, or if that space, or those spaces, if there are more than one, or maybe there are no spaces at all, so we don't know. Hmm? In this example, we have exactly one, but it depends. So in general, we could, we could use the trim method to return a new string uh, with possible eventual uh, spaces removed. Um, so we should apply the trim method on each of these elements. There is no way of uh, removing this space because this is a string; it's immutable. The only Solution we have is that to, is to replace this element with a new version without the space. So do something like uh, name array position one equal to name array 
position one dot split uh, dot trim and of course for all the positions so in this case you see that this space here in the second element one index one has been well we say the space has been removed the reality is that the element has been replaced by another one without the space in front of it so we can just repeat that uh, into a loop for let index equal to zero uh, i minus then name array dot length increment i and then name array of i equal to name array of i dot trim And it should do the game. For each element, I replace the element with something else. But we learned also the for uh, of. So let's imagine if we can use a reason, if we can use a, the, the other form of the for statement. For um, const value of names array, name array, value equal to value dot trim. Do you think? This will be equivalent. So I'm just iterating over the values instead of uh, manually managing the i the uh, the indexes because the of for of is what it does. So the value at each iteration will be one of the initial strings, and I'm replacing that with the trimmed value. So let's see what happens. Well, first of all, it was easy to guess. I declared value as a const, and so it cannot reassign it. OK, that's easy. Let's make it a, a let, and a modifiable variable. Uh, it, by the way, if we didn't, mod if we had modified, uh, try to modify the value here, const is perfectly fine because it's a new in the different iterations, we are not modifying this value, but we are creating a new one at every iteration. So inside each iteration, the variable is constant. On the next iteration, it will be another uh, variable. It's different from a, for, a normal for, where we are declaring one a variable once, and then we modify it, but it's, it's the same variable. With a for of, a new, a new variable is created at each iteration. And this is why normally, we use for const of, so that we are sure that we are not messing with the iteration variable in, inside the, the, the body of the loop. But anyway, we want to modify it now, and so we make it modifiable, and uh, it doesn't create any errors anymore, but it also doesn't modify the array. Of course it doesn't okay because what we are doing here is we are creating a reference not a copy to the strings so the array contains in position one the string with the space the first element that uh, doesn't contain any spaces so we skip it and the second iteration value is a reference to the string here the string is only there's only one string value is a reference to it then we are creating a new string with the trim operation somewhere else and modifying where value is pointing at. So value right now, after right, uh, line 11, will, is not pointing to this anymore. It's pointing to another version without the space. 
but there was no reason in the world why the array should be modified by this operation. I make a reference to you, and then I decide to make a reference with the same variable to another place, but the original place doesn't know it. Okay, so when I iterate with values, I working with reference to values. If those reference point to modifiable objects, I could modify them. I could modify the object pointed. But if I modify the reference, the object doesn't change. And just look in the other side instead of modifying it. And there's no way of modifying the object, the pointed object. The only way would be to modify the contents of the array object, because the array should contain something different. And for modify the content of an array, I need a reference to the array in an index. Okay, so I'm insisting on these two things just to help us to get the right uh, mental model about uh, variables and values and what you can modify and what you can't, okay? Reassign a variable is just uh, modifying a pointer. It doesn't modify the cons. So we talk about view. Uh, well, it's not. Uh, so this doesn't work. It's nicer to read, <laughs> but it doesn't work. Okay, and this uh, is the first step. We remove the spaces. Uh, we then need to create uh, the acronyms, right? That is the next step. Uh, uh, create a second array, no, the create an array containing one name per person, we did that. A second array by computing the acronyms of the people. So, uh, how to create the acronyms? Uh, uh, we need to take the string, split it on spaces, and uh, take the initials uh, of each word. So we need to do it uh, for each string. We define a new array, acronyms, as empty. And then we, for each, for each element of the array, name array, we create the, the string of initials, and then we add an element to this acronym. So for uh, name, well, const name of name array and you the for of because I don't need to modify anything so I'm happy and I don't care about the index values uh, so we have a name which is one of these strings huh? and we need to split the name into words hmm? so words uh, is uh, uh, the split of the names over spaces. Let's see. Okay, inside the loop, I'm printing the stuff. So I separated the words of each name. This const is not a problem because it's inside a block that is re-executed every time, so every time you create a new variable, and you're not modifying the one from the previous iteration. And we have this list of words. And now we need to extract the first letter of each word in each of the positions. Uh, just uh, I don't know if the if we add extra spaces somewhere I'm putting some extra spaces somewhere to see what happens here well what happens is that if there is more than one um, contiguous separator you will get empty elements uh, uh, it's difficult to see th that with spaces, but imagine you are splitting on commas and you have three commas in a row. Uh, oh, they actually indicate that there are three elements, and these elements are empty. So 
so it's normal for split uh, that if it finds uh, Luca is before the first space yeah we have three spaces here okay so it will use the first space and see what's next next uh, it finds another space so we will say okay there's a, a zero length element here and then I will drop the space. And then I find another space with another zero length element and so on. So every time I drop a separate, I find and drop a separator, I create a new item in the list. So we should be aware that this list of words uh, will contain words, but we could also contain empty strings uh, if the initial string is by chance had more than one spaces in a row. So there needs to be careful about that. Let's not, not make too many assumptions. So in this case, we have these words, uh, and we want to create uh, the initials of a person. How? Oh, well, by iterating the strings and taking the first letter whenever the string is not empty. So we can make a string uh, uh, initials initially empty. For this person, of course, and then iterate over words uh, or word in words. If word is not empty, then initials is equal to initials plus the first character of word. Or, okay, uh, so I'm creating this string of initials by concatenating all the initial letters. Remember, an empty string is a falsy value. So if word means if word is not empty. Yes. Thank you. Oh. It's always off. And then we can just push uh, these initials that we just computed for this word into the list of acronyms. Acronyms, push, initials. And let's hope. Let's remove the sprint and see what we have. Yeah. By the way, console.log uh, is not really a print. Because you see that it prints something, but it's trying to format it in some way. Uh, you can inspect that. Uh, well, in this case, not because the program is already stopped. But if, if the program was stopped in, at a breakpoint, you can inspect it. So the, co the debug console is uh, an extension of the debugger. Okay? And don't uh, be surprised if uh, you run the same uh, program acronyms in a terminal in this case it clearly was a javascript terminal and you get a, a different output format and if you run it in a normal terminal uh, it may no in this case it's equal but it doesn't need to be if you run the same code into the browser for example the format will again will be different so Console.log is not really a, a printing stream. It's something more, say, intelligent that tries to, it's for debug purposes, not for printing purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, 
so it tries to format the data in a way that is more readable or more useful hmm? for printing really something we need the input output files or something like that not not the console so the console is not just a stream it's not just a file it's something that tries to be clever right okay the last point was uh, that the, the exercise required to print uh, acronyms and full names uh, side by side so we can use uh, the format strings uh, for that so instead of just logging brutally the variables we format them nicely we iterate uh, over the positions these arrays go in parallel with the same indexes it's not a very clever data structure i would prefer uh, an array of objects probably but we still have to learn how to do that R right now we have two parallel arrays of strings uh, we can print them together with a normal uh, name array of length increment i and then console.log a string uh, I'm using the back ticks and you have all the break after that for finding back ticks on your keyboard um, with the acronym with the acronyms I of course inside the braces you can put any expression not just a variable that uses local variables Dash, uh, name array i sorry to be inside the string that yeah that is more or less the output I, i'm printing strings so the console doesn't mess with those oh no and with these extra spaces, hmm. I didn't uh, think about that. So I should probably also try to polish the spaces of the names before. But okay, I'm just printing the names as they were in the initial string. And if they had extra spaces, I'm not crashing on them, but I'm not uh, cleaning them either. Okay. Okay, so I think we can stop here. Yeah, unless you have any questions. So we have uh, we are more than in time, and it's good because we then we have more time for the next topic, which is more interesting also. Objects and functions. We started Tango 5.